All right, everybody, welcome back to a very special episode of Breaking Point. I recently got an email from Chris Burns, the Swiss national baseball coach, and he said that the students and the young baseball players that he's working with in Switzerland have been learning a lot from my Breaking Point videos, and he asked specifically if I could do more breakdowns of how to read hitters' body language, how to get them out uh, in an at bat, so how to make adjustments there, but also how to know what they're thinking as at bats progress in the game. Uh, so that's what this episode is going to be about. And for this one, I thought of a moment where I was visibly, uh, or I don't know if it's, vi I, I was visibly confused actually on the mound, but also I just remember being very confused during this moment. And it's an at bat that Evan Gaddis had against me. He had a ball that was above his head out for a home run, and I was so confused as to why. He did that and he was able to hit the pitch. And it turns out that I missed a couple cues leading up to it that cost me two runs. So Evan Gaddis is one of my favorite hitters of all time. I love watching him uh, swing the bat, especially even when he hits home runs off me. It's kind of ridiculous. He has like two two-run homers off me and 11 strikeouts. And every at bat that I had for a while was like a strikeout or a two-run homer. So anyway, this episode goes out to all my uh, young baseball players and fans in Switzerland and Europe in general that are watching these videos. I appreciate you guys and hopefully you learned something. Let's dive in. I call this crisscrossing the corner. You know, tunneling is a crazy concept. There's no way a big leaguer swings at that. If this ball's one to seven, he absolutely crushes it. Boom, that's the breaking point. All right, so here we are. As always, I'm going to let it play through first. This is a full season of at bats against Gaddis. So this is gonna take a little bit. I think it's a minute and a half. Here we go. So this is actually my first start of the year. This is in Houston. Um, I had just developed a two-seam fastball, and you'll see that in this at-bat here, I believe. Maybe it's the third at-bat that I get him looking on that. Oh, there it was. So I had just developed that pitch, and people in the league didn't know I had it yet, and so it was kind of confusing, and it worked really well for me. I think I went six innings in this game, and... Uh, struck out 11 and walked six and didn't give up any hits. So here's the second game of the year that I faced him. There's the pitch. I don't know how he hit that pitch. It's still so ridiculous. Yep. Um, but ways to have avoided that for sure. And I'll point those out. Good old caveman. Don't know how Jan caught that ball. There we go. All right, here we go. Let's jump into the body language. I'm not going to talk too much about uh, catchers and pitch framing or sequencing or uh, tunneling or anything in this one. I'm going to try to focus mostly on the body language. So here we go. First pitch of the year is a cutter away. We get buy-in uh, from Evan here. What we know going in, I don't know if yellow is going to work too well on this one. There's a lot of yellows and greens. Uh, what we know Evan going in is like this zone here on fastballs. He, he hits, but anything kind of above this line, especially if it gets into this area is good. And then breaking ball wise, maybe I'll do some blue. Breaking ball wise, anything kind of below this line down this way uh, is good as well. So basically you're just trying to avoid the middle of the plate uh, against him. Very dangerous hitter, obviously. He has a lot of power, but also strikes out quite a bit. So that's kind of the report. That's the information we have going in. So we start him off, first pitch cutter, we get some buy-in. We get a check swing here, and if I understand my cutter, well, it starts kind of down the middle and then breaks away just a little bit. So this pitch probably looked like it was maybe outer black. Um, so we get this buy-in. What this tells me right away, first pitch of the year, first time he's seen me, and he's up there to swing, all right? He's triggering early, he sees something he likes, and he's going to swing the bat. So again, I, I know already that he's being and going to be very aggressive. We're in the first inning here. 
uh, two guys on, both walks. So I've walked two guys in the first inning, and he's up there being very aggressive. So this is giving me a lot of information just based on the game situation about what his approach and his plan is. Okay, so we don't get it. Check swing, ball one. Come back and we throw the exact same pitch, but we locate it a lot better, and we get the swing. So this makes sense, he's being aggressive, threw a good pitch, and we get to 1-1, one, one. but what I want you to see is, so he takes this swing, and the first thing he does, he kind of hops, catches his balance, and he's kicking the dirt right here. This is one of the things that you can look for. Every hitter has some sort of tell. Not every hitter, but most hitters have some sort of tell, right? They uh, look a certain way. They flick their bat a certain way. They kind of like brush their shoulders off or they, you know, tape their, their, uh, their batting gloves together or whatever the, whatever the case is. But Evan, uh, he, he kicks the dirt. So he feels very comfortable here. He t swung and he missed. He says, okay. I missed that pitch, took a good swing, doesn't think anything of it, nothing's distracting, nothing's confusing. He goes right to his default of kicking the dirt. Okay, next pitch, we're 1-1, one, one, and we get a fastball. Here we go. We get this fastball kind of on the borderline area, but you can see, let's, let me draw the strikes. And you got it down there in the, in the corner if you want to see it as well, but this pitch gets kind of in this area. And again, when we're trying to avoid this kind of middle area, this is kind of borderline, but if you look at his swing, he misses this, he's late on it. The ball's already by him, and then the bat gets there, and he swings. All right, catches his balance, but he feels he had a good hack at it, and again, goes right to, right to kicking the dirt. So he feels very comfortable with those two swings. Um, he took the first one, had a check swing, he's being very aggressive, but he feels comfortable with swinging at pitch two and three, and he goes straight to kicking the dirt. Now here, we go to, we elevate the fastball a little bit more, and you can see this, see the bent arms here. Uh, I've talked about this a lot. He bends the arms, he's trying to pull the bat in, the ball's just by him, and we get our strikeout. All right, so we've gone you know, fastball, if you look down at the strikes on the, in the bottom right, we've gone fastball here, and then we added and we went fastball up and in, and we blew both of those by him. So, kind of catches his balance and just goes back, you know, okay, head straight back to the dugout. This just starts going that way. Next at bat, start him off the same, same exact way, cutter. We get a little bit, if you watch the hips and the knees here, we get a little bit more of a, of a, it's not a, it's not a perfect take. We get a little bit of buy-in, but not nearly as much as the very first one. Nobody on, two outs, probably being a little bit more patient. Uh, takes this pretty well. Next pitch, fastball again. We get this fastball up, and you can see has trouble getting to it. Just swings right through it, misses it. But this pitch, up oh, there, yep, right back to the dirt. Catches his balance, immediately back to the dirt. So in his head, he's like, yep, I just missed that one, but I'm having good swings. Go right back up there. We get this same buy-in, almost the same result as the very first pitch of the game where we get full hip turn, full buy-in. He checks his swing. We don't get the call, but he's bought in. He's up there being aggressive. We know that about him. So now we're 2-1, we come back with a 2-1 cutter that ends up probably being a ball, but again, he sees this pitch probably as a fastball right about there. We draw our strike zone up here. He probably is identifying this as a fastball in his happy zone of the middle here. Obviously it ends up being a cutter and going down this way, but he takes a big hack at it. Out in front, kind of reaching here, you can see you know, foot rolling, knee, hip, all going this way. Typically out in front. What does he do? There's a little bit right here. Look at the head. All right, so if you've watched his body language after his swings before, he usually catches his balance, puts his head right down. But look what he's doing here. There's a little bit of a pause here. He's kind of like looking out at me. So this is the first time that there's been any break in his routine. Usually it's a swing. It's catch the balance, look down, wipe the dirt. 
But this time he swings, catches the balance, stares out here a little bit, pondering. Either maybe he's trying to intimidate and say, oh, I was right on that. Or maybe he's pondering. I read this as kind of pondering. Like he just swung and missed at one. In a 2-1 in a two -one count, he reads fastball, can't see that it's a cutter, and swings through it. And this kind of confuses him in a 2-1 count. So he's looking out there like, hmm, just briefly, little things that you can miss. But there's definitely a little pause here. And then he goes back to kicking the dirt. All right, so now he's thinking a little bit. Now we're in 2-2 two -two count. And he's seen fastball here that he's swung at. He's taken a fastball up here. He's swung and missed at a, a cutter down there. And we saw a little bit of confusion. So what do we do? We come back with a pitch that he has not seen yet. Two seam, this one rides back quite a bit. As you can see, it starts out and it just ends up even kind of surprising Berto with how much it came back this way. But if you watch Evan here, there's just a little bit of a hip trigger, but he doesn't even follow the ball. He's looking out here almost the entire time because when this ball comes out of my hand, it's off the plate. He immediately reads no swing and it dives back, but he was thinking about the last pitch that started kind of out here and ended up down here, he said ball, so now he sees the pitch that starts outside of it about the same height, and then this one darts back and he takes it for a strike. And he kind of sits here like, hmm, I just took a fastball down the middle. You can see this kind of like sigh almost, like hmm, I've been had. So this reaction right here, uh, is important because now he's a little bit confused. We saw in the 2-1 pitch he's a little bit confused and this one he's like, hmm, I got had. So now we've, we've struck him out on a fastball up and in, we've struck him out on a comeback fastball away, and we've got him to swing and buy in on a lot of cutters like down in this area. So he's kind of trapped in the middle right now. All right, let's go on to the third at bat. Again, knowing him, and there's a guy on second base here, uh, Springer's on second, and knowing Evan, he's probably going to be swinging. He's very aggressive. So we're set up trying to get a fastball up here. And I miss a little bit down and away, but he freezes. He didn't take this pitch because he thought it was a ball. He took this because it surprised him. Look at his eyes. He's staring out here the whole time. It's not like he's watching this ball and tracking it as it gets towards the plate and reading ball. He sees this and he immediately takes it. So something out of my hand tells him that this is a ball and he just doesn't even track the ball. He's staring out at me the whole time. He kind of freezes. We'll get a strike call. This is probably a ball. It's down. So he's probably right about this. Maybe it's a strike. I don't know. But he immediately reads this as a ball probably because it's the first thing that he's seen hard over here that hasn't gone this way. So he's expecting anything in this area to be soft and going this way and anything that's kind of in this area to be hard and you know either going this way like a two seam or kind of staying up like a four seam. Oh man, I'm, I'll be better at switching colors. Anyway, so we get the strike call and he kind of has this like, hmm, look at the facial expression right here. He doesn't think so, but what does he not do? He takes this pitch, there's no kicking in the dirt, feet are still, he's planted, he's staring out this way. He's thinking. Now, he looks back, he's like, hmm, kind of this pondering look, like, I don't know about that. Just kind of taking in what he, what he just saw, because now I've shown him something again that I haven't shown him at all leading up to this point, that down and away kind of freeze fastball. So he's thinking about this, though. There's no, there's no dirt swipe. There's no catching balance. There's no movement of the feet. He's not, he's not comfortable right now. He's kind of processing the information. Now, go back to that cutter. Uh, this one's probably starts on the same kind of trajectory. This one probably tunneled pretty well. We get a little bit of buy-in. Whoops. We get a little bit of buy-in over here. Uh, a little bit of hip twitch, but this pitch isn't close enough to get a ton. And again, still kind of like looking out at the mound. So this is a much more comfortable take for, for him. Now we get the cutter. And again, this starts up. So this one goes up here and then breaks down for a strike. Everything that he's seen starting up has either run back this way or kind of been a four seam staying true up here. 
And this is the first cutter that's like actually in the zone that he could hit. He's out in front. You see this already going this way, knee going, hip going. Now he's trying to hold up. He's not reading this pitch well. He's not seeing the ball very well right now because this pitch, by the time it crosses the plate, is in a zone that is very hittable. You know, if he just if he sees this pitch and he's kind of reading the information on the way to the plate for a while out of my hand, he probably takes a swing and hits this pitch. But he's out in front timing-wise because he's kind of cheating to get to a fastball because I've beat him up here, and then I beat him with a comeback fastball this way to strike him out, and he doesn't want to take another fastball down the middle. So he's out in front of this and takes it. Now we get some feet movement. He steps out, which he doesn't do a whole lot. Steps out, kind of looking off into the distance, but there's a little bit of movement. So he's more comfortable. There's a little bit of dirt swipe right here with the foot, if you see it over here, just a little bit. So he's processing this, but a little bit more comfortable with that take. So now we're one, two, and we go to a curveball in the dirt, probably starts in that same tunnel. This, this is about probably a tunnel really, really well. Uh, and we get this again looking like a fastball and he's out in front and you can see how much he misses this ball by not even close you can see where it bounces it's right off the outside corner of the plate he's out in front typical you know uh, posture kind of slumping over this way knee going this way hip foot roll all the all the signs that he's out in front are here and we get the strikeout so one thing that about that uh, that first game we struck him out three times we got him with a comeback fastball on the outside part. We got him with a fastball up and in. So comeback fastball over here, fastball up and in here. And then we got him with a curveball down here. But we attacked him a lot with cutters away and off-speed stuff and fastballs up. So moving into the, the critical at bat here where he hits a ridiculous – I still am baffled by how he hits this pitch – uh, going into this game, he had to say to himself, I'm not going to get beat by fastballs up here. I'm going to get on them, and then I'm going to try to take anything else. But if I see a pitch up here, I'm going to swing at it. I'm not going to get beat and be late on fastballs. So this pitch happens, and he fouls it straight back. Typically speaking, when a hitter fouls a ball straight back, it's because they were a little bit late getting the barrel to it. So if you look at, the, if you look at um, a diagram from above, if you have your plate here, I'll kind of diagram it out. If you have your plate here and a pitch is on this, and a pitch is like here, kind of coming this direction. Typically, you're gonna, if you're a right-handed hitter, you're going to want to pull this ball. So you want to get the barrel somewhat at this angle to catch the ball out front and project the ball towards the pull side. What happens when you're late is that you get the barrel to about here, and you don't get the barrel up towards the ball or you don't position the barrel perfectly uh, so you end up missing the ball because the ball beats you so you'll hit the ball on on the top of the bat it'll get into here and you'll foul it straight back because the ball will just continue on its trajectory and you're just a little bit late getting the barrel to it and you kind of catch it off uh, closer to the handle I would say so what happens here is I'm assuming when I throw this pitch and I see him foul it straight back that he was late on it. All the information I have from the first game says that he was late on fastballs up. I definitely get this fastball up. This is like belt high. And so I just see the ball go straight back and I automatically say to myself, oh, he's late. Except I didn't automatically say that to myself. What I saw was something completely different and I didn't know how to interpret it. And I didn't know until I went back and looked at the video that I said, I'll be damned. He was out in front of this pitch. This pitch is 94. And he is out in front of it. Look at this. You can see him kind of like, he gets to a position, gets to a position, he's kind of reaching for it. Look at this. Foot's this way, hips kind of this way. We get this rounding of the spine. So I miss this. He is lunging for this ball to try to hit it. He's out in front of 94 up. So I'm sitting on the mound, I'm confused. I'm like, how the heck? Did that ball go straight back and it looked so odd it looked so different to me it didn't look like a late swing and i missed it so i didn't know what to throw next i should have just thrown a breaking ball or something but i assumed that i could just safely go up with a fastball 
because I would it would be faster and he's clearly in attack mode and he wants to swing so I figured I'd just waste a fastball up out of the zone uh, for the next pitch but what I missed is look at his body language here so he sees this ball go up looks at it there's no you know feet scratching of the of the dirt or anything like that he sees it grabs the bat watch what he does with the bat right here mmm anger he's like man I missed it right there he kind of like flicks the bat in frustration and now he just kind of like relaxes and he's just staring in off into nothing like he's looking over to the dugout I'm assuming that what happened is he had discussions with the hitting coach or other players or something like that that said, I'm going to hunt a fastball, I'm going to get the head out, and I'm not going to get beat by a fastball. And he got his fastball. He got exactly what he was looking for, and he missed it. And he said, oh, man, there's frustration there. He's looking over there like, how the heck did I miss that? But I am looking up here at the ball, wondering if it's going to stay in, wondering if I have a free out or not. And I completely ignore and miss all the signs that he's telling me. If I'm looking at Evan on this, I see him be frustrated, like, ah, oh, I missed it. I know that tells me in that moment, oh, he got what he was looking for and he missed it, so I know he's looking for a fastball. I miss all that. So then the next pitch comes. Again, I don't know what I just saw, so I'm just going to waste a fastball up here. I get the fastball up there. Now, it probably got probably away, maybe middle, depending, you know, the angle's a little bit off here. So it didn't get in where I wanted it, but look what he has to do on this pitch. He's down, he straightens up, and it's like chopping at this ball. This ball, if you, let's see here, I start my delivery, and his head is at this level. When he hits this ball, his head is above where he started, and the ball is, oh, geez, that's a terrible line. The ball is literally chin high. This ball is at his neck, and he hits it. But he was hunting fastball, and he was on time, and he got a fastball, and he just hits it out. So there it goes. Ball got out of there quick. And here's my reaction, like, um, wow. I'm confused. It was like, yeah, wow, that's, uh, huh, wow. That's what's going through my head there. I'm not even mad. I'm just like, how did you do that? I was so confused. But I missed the body language. I missed him telling me exactly what he was looking for. I went back. I looked at the video, how he hit the pitch. I noticed that he was early. And so this is what we start off the next at bat with. Cutter, get a strike call. Now looking at, looking at the hitter, we get the feet movement. And now he sees the umpire call it. He doesn't think this is a strike. He kind of ducks his head, stands there for a second. Like, I don't agree. Kind of looks back at the, at the umpire. But there's not that default feet movement, dirt scratch, whatever. So even after hitting a home run, He's sitting there like something else has his attention here. And so every time he doesn't do the typical foot scratch, you know, feet movement, foot scratch, clean the box type of movement, something else is on his mind. He's thinking about how he didn't see the pitch or how did he, I didn't expect him to throw an off speed pitch in a 2 1 count or, man, how did I miss that pitch or something like that. When he's just locked in and it's flow state with him, it's swing and it's, Catch your balance and, and swipe the dirt. Uh, so again, now we have him distracted. He's kind of looking back at the ump. We're 01. I go, I don't know why I threw this pitch. This is a dumb pitch. I throw a two seam. So I think what I was trying to do is kind of go cutter this way and then come back to the second pitch with a two seam coming this way to confuse him. And then I was going to go with uh, a, probably a curveball that comes down here to strike him out. I don't know why I was thinking that. Uh, I was young. This is 2015, I believe. So I didn't have a whole lot of experience in the league. Now, if I had seen him hit the home run before, I probably wouldn't have thrown him another fastball the rest of the game until he proved to me that he was sitting on an off-speed pitch. But anyway, uh, come back here. His fastball's up and away. And again, he's like straightening up for it, and he's like reaching. 
So I'm confused by this swing because it's, it looks like he's just trying to, this ball is just clearly a ball. It starts way up and over here. Nothing that I throw up here ever ends up for a strike. If anything, it's gonna be a two seam that's gonna run back and be high, but he's so jumpy on trying to get a fastball that he's gonna swing at this ball anyway. So this ball's foul, we're 0-2, and this is really this is really cool. This is one thing I will talk about about catching. Watch Jan here. We're 0-2, and remember, we've beaten him on a fastball here for a strikeout. We've got him to take a backdoor uh, two-seam for a strikeout. We've also thrown him some other fastballs up here in this general area throughout the course of the season that he's been laid on and he's swung through. Jan hits the glove, steps inside with his foot, taps inside with his glove, and look what immediately happens. Watch, watch the feet. Watch the feet as Jan's doing this. Jan moves inside, taps. Okay, now we're gonna get this front foot open up, the back foot scoot off. We're gonna back up off the plate a little bit. So you can see this if I play it kind of, you can see him how he's working his way back. He senses Jan is going inside. Jan then of course goes back outside, but he does it quietly. And now Evan thinks that we're gonna throw him something that's coming in here. So he's gonna speed up, he's gonna swing at it. Anything he sees, he knows he has to start the barrel early because he's not gonna get beat with a fastball in here because he just sensed Jan is set up in here. But Jan's not set up there, Jan deked him. So now when I throw this curveball that's nowhere close, I mean, look, look where this pitch bounces. This is not, this is nowhere close. There's no way a big leaguer should swing at this pitch. But because of the deke in here by Jan, because of the fastballs that we beat him with here, because I threw him a fastball and he had to cheat and get out in front of it, he was out in front of this one, he hit this one for a homer, we've drawn his attention up into here that we're going to be getting him with fastballs and that he's late on fastballs. So now he speeds up early. He's swinging out of the hand. This ball comes out of the hand and he's already made his decision that he's going to swing. And then we get this just nowhere close ball that you just ask yourself, you know, when you see that at home, you're like, how the heck does someone swing at that? Well, there's a mental game that goes into it and the buildup of all the games beforehand and what the hitter's trying to do. So, Next at bat, again, we're going to start him off with a cutter because we haven't gotten beat at all when I start him off with a cutter. It's, I think I've started him off with a cutter every, almost every single at bat, or a lot of them anyway, during the season. So this is a bad pitch. It ends up right in his happy zone. He is right on it. You can see here, full extension. Head is now down on the ball. Uh, ankle has rolled this way, but the hip and the knee are like dead locked. There's no buckling of the knee going this way. The hip isn't shooting out this way. Everything, all the posture is like super well balanced. So he's on this pitch and he just misses it. And you can tell he's on it because he goes right back to catch his balance, scratch the dirt. So he takes, his, he takes a good swing. He's like, oh, I just missed it, but makes sense. I'm on it. He's comfortable right back there. Now we go another one. This one's even worse pitch. And he's a little bit out in front of this. But it feels like he had a good swing, feet movement, and he goes right there, right here to scratch the dirt. Kind of cuts off a little bit before you can see it, but this foot's about to scratch the dirt. He was a little out in front of this pitch. Gets full extension there, and then kind of you can see the posture break down a little bit as he's trying to reach for it and he fouls it off. He probably wasn't expecting another cutter. He was probably expecting a fastball because I've thrown him a lot of fastballs. Or he's just sitting there looking for a fastball and that's his entire approach for the game. That could very well be the case too. So now we come back with the same, basically the same curveball that I got him to swing at before. Uh, I don't know how Jan catches this ball. We get a little bit of buy-in on this. We get the hips to go a little bit. He looks at it, he starts to swing, but identifies very early that this is, not, this is not a swing that he wants to take. Most likely because I've thrown him two slower pitches, two cutters, and he's slowed down a little bit, so he's kind of being conditioned to see off-speed and seek off-speed in this at-bat. 
So he takes that and feels pretty good about himself. You got some feet movement, you got the scratch, you know, looks kind of not thinking about anything, just got the scratch and going into default, so he seems very comfortable. And then we come back with uh, a really good curveball, actually, right where you want it right below the zone, kind of borderline strike call out in front of it. Uh, fouls it off, just barely nicks it. Out in front, clearly still looking for a fastball. He sees something up, he starts. Hips go. Now you see you see this movement of the of the front knee, uh, kind of rolling out, and then you see the rounding of the posture. So he's out in front of this for sure. Does a good job of fouling it off, and you can see this kind of bent knee right here going this way, roll here. This is way different than the first cutter of the bat that he swung at um, when the foot rolled, but everything, the knee and the hip and everything were in perfect alignment and he was really well balanced. Here, he's clearly, you know, all this is rounded because he's out in front, he's trying to buy himself some time. Fouls it off, catches his balance. But now, instead of scratching the dirt, he sees that Jan got hit and Evan's a catcher too. So now he is looking at Jan, making sure that Jan's okay. So this is where you really know Anything that has his attention, no feet scratching. So now when he goes back to, okay, uh, as soon as he's sure that Jan's okay, now he goes back to, you know, looking at the dirt and then he scratches and all that. And this is really what's telling because this one, you know exactly what happened. He's asking Jan. So if something has his attention, he's paying attention to that. He's not paying attention to what just happened with the pitch. As soon as he goes back into comfort mode and he says, okay, Jan's okay, now he's focused back on the game, now we go back to this default foot scratch the dirt. Uh, so that's, that's one thing that you can really see is picking up on hitter's tendencies. And then we come back with this one. If I execute this backdoor two seam, I'm pretty sure I have him frozen, but I just yank it. Watch me here. I'm frustrated, I get this quick little turn because I know that's probably a strikeout that I missed. I'm like, ah, I missed that pitch, I yanked it. If you watch Evan over here, I yank it, he takes it, feels pretty good about it, right there to the foot scratch, like looking out at me, but he's like, yep, I took that pitch, he's very comfortable, got it, default mode. And then we come back with a 2-2, the curveball that he's seen earlier that he had to swing at. This one gets a little bit below the zone, actually bounces off the plate, and we get the swing that we're looking for. You get the roll, get that rounded, rounded posture, you get this big reach with the bat, everything over here, typical, going this way, and we get a strikeout. So that is, uh, that wraps up the, the season of at-bats against Evan. The couple key takeaways that I want you guys watching, um, especially to those back in, in Switzerland and in Europe, uh, look at the hitter's tells. If you can look at video and watch guys that you're facing, or if you pick up on some of these things in the game, just watch what they naturally do, what, what their tendencies are. I picked up on the fact that when he feels comfortable and he's locked into the pitch and nothing else is distracting him, it's catch the balance, swipe the feet, move on. There's other hitters, like I said, sometimes they swing and they look down and they do their gloves right away. But just watch the hitter's body language in uh, in between pitches. I know it's hard because the ball's in play or it's fouled back or something, but the more information, the more you can watch the hitter and the more you can see, the more they'll tell you about where they're at, what they're trying to do. I missed this one where he was out in front of the first pitch fastball and then he was frustrated and he was like, mm, that should have told me that he was looking for that pitch and I should have gone off speed and it cost me two runs. But it also, I adjusted after that very quickly and I then went back to the off-speed stuff, the curveball down, and mixing up the pitches so he couldn't get a beat on me, and I ended up being able to strike him out two more times. So that's the main thing. And then for you catchers out there, that was a pretty cool moment watching what Johan did where he kind of tapped the dirt and set up inside a little bit loudly to give the hitter some information, some false information, and then slide back away for an off-speed pitch. You saw Evan kind of back up thinking the ball was going to be in, start a swing super early on a pitch that wasn't anywhere close. Jan probably is the one that got me that strikeout. It wasn't the execution of the pitch. It was his deke um, right before the pitch. So those are some things to watch for. 
I can go into the sequencing and the tunneling on these at bats, and I actually I actually executed pretty well uh, in these at bats. But this one was for all my Swiss uh, young baseball players and fans out there. So hopefully, learn something about body language. I'll have some some more coming out soon. Stay tuned. Uh, but for anyone else out there who likes these videos, if you could do me a favor, share it with some of your friends, some of your baseball players, anyone who might get entertainment or value out of this, I would be very much appreciated. Also, if you haven't hit that subscribe button already, please do so. I have a goal of getting to 100,000 subscribers by the end of 2020, so you can help me out on that if you're not already subscribed. And leave me a comment, any at-bats that you'd like to see, any subjects that you'd like to see me cover, like body language or catcher framing or anything like that, let me know what you'd like to see in the comments. And I think that's it. Hope you're all staying uh, healthy and safe and happy, and let's all pray that baseball's back very soon. See you guys.